All right, hey everybody, today we are looking at section 4.7, in which we are looking at CPCTC. Okay, the first thing, and this is the first thing in your notes, is that CPT, the CPCTC stands for Corresponding Parts of Congruent Triangles Are Congruent. Okay, one thing that's important to know is you need to know this. This is important. Okay, you need to know, oh, that's terrible hearing. Okay, you need to know what this stands for and be able to identify what, if I say CPC to C, you should know what that means. Okay, so what we're talking about here is when we have triangles that are congruent, okay, all the pieces and parts are those triangles are the same. So if I take, for example, and I'm just going to sketch two triangles here, and we're going to pretend that I sketch them exactly the same way. Okay. If I know that my triangles are congruent by side angle side. Okay. So I could say that this triangle is congruent to this triangle. Okay. Because I know that two pairs of sides are congruent and then the angle between them is congruent. What CPCTC is, is it means that once you know that you have congruent triangles, you can conclude, oh, well, since the triangles are congruent, I know that those are congruent, then I know that these are congruent, and I know that these are congruent. It allows you to say, hey, everything else is congruent. Basically, we're circling back around to section 4.4 when we first started talking about congruent figures. That definition of congruent figures was that all of the corresponding pieces were congruent. That's what this is. Okay, so it's saying that once you know enough information to prove the triangle's congruent, well, we can kind of jump back to that definition and say, hey, our triangles are congruent, so I know everything else is congruent. All right, so that's what CPCTC is going to be all about. So let's kind of take a look at this in action. So when we're looking here, we want to design a bridge across a canyon. We need to find the distance from A to B. So when we do that, we're going to locate the other points so that we see this. First things first. Okay. I want to know, can I conclude what the length is of AB? All right. It says that DE is 600 feet. So I'm going to write in 600 feet right here. Okay. So, what I want to know is, do I have enough information to show that triangle ECD and triangle ACB, those two triangles are congruent, okay? Well, if we look here, notice that these two angles are vertical angles, so they are congruent. And these are both 500 feet. So they are congruent as well. So I know that also I have right angles. So I have angle side angles. So I know that triangle ECD is congruent to triangle um, ACB by angle side angle. Okay. Now. Because I have enough information to conclude that my triangles are congruent, I know that my other pieces are congruent. So AB is the first and last. ED is the first and last. So I can say that AB is going to equal 600 feet. This is using that CPCTC. All right. Questions on there? Go ahead and write that down now. All right, so what I want you to do here is I want you to try this problem on your own. Okay, so give it a shot. Go ahead and pause the video and see if you can answer this question. Okay, so let's take a look. We have a landscape architect set up the triangles as shown, and we want to know the distance of JK. Now, if you look at this and you automatically go, oh, I know what it is. Okay, make sure you have your reasoning down correctly. Notice that I know that this is congruent to this because they're both 19, All right? I know 30 and 30 are the same. And then I know that these angles here are congruent. So my triangles are congruent by side angle side. 
Okay, I need to know that first. You cannot use CPCTC until you have proven that your triangles are congruent. Okay, so now I know that JK is 41 feet. Okay, that is using that CPCTC. Oops, spelled it wrong. CPCTC. Too many C's. Okay, so again, that's corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. All right, so these are the same only because our triangles are congruent, and we've proved our triangles are congruent by side angle side. Okay, so that's one of those things that you need to make sure you're watching out for. All right, let's take a look at a flow proof here. I want to prove if I'm given that AB and DC are congruent and that angle ABC, which is this whole angle here, okay, is congruent to DCB, which is this whole angle here, okay, I want to prove that um, angles A and D are congruent. So here's the deal. With this section and with really with this chapter, if your goal is not to prove triangles are congruent, that means that your goal is to prove triangles are congruent and then to take one more step. Okay. So in order to show triangles or excuse me, angles A and D are congruent, I need to show my triangles are congruent first. Okay. So let's take a look here. I'm given that these two pairs are congruent. The next thing that I want to look at is see if the triangles share a side. And they do. They share BC. So that is my reflexive step. Okay. Now, sometimes it's helpful. Oops. Ignore that. Sorry. Okay. Um, sometimes it's helpful when you're doing um, problems like this where the triangles are mishmashed and really far and really overlapped. Um, it's helpful to kind of draw them out separately. So if I kind of draw ABC here, I know that this and this and this should be marked. And then if I draw out, okay, DCB, okay, this is marked and so is this and so is this. So sometimes when your triangles are kind of mishmashed like this, if you pull them apart and you draw them separately, it's easier to see why your triangles are congruent. So here my triangles are congruent by side angle side. Okay, now I know my triangles are congruent. That means every other matching piece and part in that triangle is also congruent. So I can say A and D are congruent by C, P, C, T, C. So what I want you guys to notice is this part here is what we've been doing the last couple of days in the last couple of sections, okay? Getting to that point where we're proving triangles congruent using side, 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 angle, side, angle, side, angle, and angle, angle, side, okay, and HL. So using all of our possibles. Then all we're doing today is taking one more step by saying, oh, these two sides are congruent or these two angles are congruent because I have congruent triangles, so by CPCTC. So again, we're doing the same thing that we've done in the last couple of days. We're now adding one step to show angles or, or sides are congruent. All right, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write it down. Let's take a look at example three, okay? So lots of proofs here. We're given that RS and UT are congruent. We're given RT and US are congruent. Okay, so the next thing that you should see, we're trying to prove that angles T and S are congruent. And I have no way of showing that right now. So again, my goal is to gonna be to try to prove my triangles are congruent first, then I can move forward from there. So remember, what should you see here? Okay, you should see that your two triangles share this side. All right, so that should be your next step is that RU is congruent to RU by your reflexive step. Okay, now from here, I want to state that my triangles are congruent because look, I have all three pairs of sides and both triangles congruent, so I know they're congruent by side, side, side. 
So I'm going to pick a triangle and I'm going to pick a way to name it. So I'm going to say triangle R T U is congruent to triangle. Now, it's sometimes harder to see in ones like this which sides go together. So I'm starting at R, which is the vertex between the sides that are marked with two and three slashes. So when I look at this triangle, two and three slashes are going to meet at U. So that means that this angle is going to go with this angle here. So it's going to be angle U. All right, then T is out here where the two and one sides meet. So one and two meet out here at S. So S is going to come next. Then my last one is going to be R. Okay, so again, it's really important when we're writing those congruent statements that you are paying attention to making sure that you're matching up those sides correctly and those vertices correctly. All right, now we have our triangles are congruent. So that means all the other pieces and parts are congruent. So I can say that angle T is congruent to angle S by CPCTC. Again, corresponding parts of congruent triangles are congruent. Okay, this part here means congruent triangles. You cannot use CPCTC until you know you have congruent triangles. Okay, so congruent triangles comes after you have proven triangles are congruent. That's one of the big things that I want you guys to be aware of because a lot of times people aren't sure what to put in their proofs and where, which is understandable. And I realize, again, don't forget, I understand that these are hard and they're hard to see, but make sure you don't use congruent triangles until you've actually stated triangles are congruent. Okay. All right. So questions on that, go ahead and write that down. And then let's go ahead and take a look at our last example here. All right. So we are given that um, RS and SV are congruent and RT and VU are congruent and angles R and V are both right angles. Okay, um, there is actually a step missing here. Hmm. Okay, well, we'll live with it. I'll kind of tuck it in here. And if you would do me a favor and do the same thing on your notes. Um, so this is actually going to be, we're going to tuck a step three in here. This is going to be four. This is going to be five. So again, we're going to kind of tuck in a three and a four. And this is going to be five. Okay, so if you would just make that little adjustment on your notes, I would appreciate it. Okay, so we're given that these are right angles. Okay, what does it mean when our angles are right? Okay, when we have two right angles, it means that they are going to be congruent. This is the step that got left out, my apologies. So angles are congruent to angle V because all right angles are congruent. Okay, that's our right angle congruence theorem. Now that I know that these two angles are congruent, okay, because they're right, I know that my triangles are congruent. So I can say triangle TRS, is congruent to triangle, okay, U, V, S, by side angle side. All right, and then from here, I can say, hey, now that my triangles are congruent, I know that angles T and U are congruent, again, by C, P, C, T, C. Okay, so if you have questions on that, go ahead and write that down as well, and then I will see you guys later. Have a wonderful evening. I hope you guys have a great day. Bye.